Raphael, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Auto Central show, South Africa's number one motoring podcast, powered by autotrader.co.za. And I am your host, George Mini, and I have a lot opposite me, alongside me, opposite yeah. me, Wandile Sishi in the house. How are you doing, Wendili? Every single week, but it's blistering hot. Um, <sighs> I don't think I've ever felt heat like this since, like, as far back as I can remember. It's flipping hot. Yeah. It's like... Ridiculous. And yeah. So if, yeah. if you're listening to this next winter, it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, the uh, winter is not coming anytime soon because, no. yeah, it's cold. Um, I mean, do you prefer the heat or the cold? Um, I used to prefer the cold, but that completely changed when I moved to Joburg. Um, yeah. It's just colder here. I don't know how it happens, but it's just, it's freezing um, in the winter here. But when it's hot, it's also really hot. Properly hot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's well, crazy. Talking about listening to this in the future, if you are listening to this in the future, or if you want to listen to us in the future, uh, remember there's two ways to listen. One is uh, three ways to listen. There's multiple ways to listen, but three main ways. And uh, you can download the podcast on any platform if you want to listen uh, to the audio. Yeah, but okay. then that removes the aspect of video. Yes, so if you want to see us, yeah, I don't know what it is to uh, see you, but uh, if you want to <laughs> see us, uh, our ugly mugs, <laughs> then uh, you can also watch on YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, both versions are exactly the same, just one has uh, video, and uh, you can watch it on YouTube at, uh, at Auto Trader SA, our YouTube channel. Um, uh, you can also listen first. Yeah. On a Monday morning at 9 o'clock when uh, this goes out on cliffcentral.com. Yeah, and that's live. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the show. There's no filtering here, you know. There's no yeah. editing. It's it is no, what it is. It is what so it is. Yeah, um, we might just kind of, you know, if one if Wendy falls off his chair, we'll <laughs> we'll edit it out. Oh, maybe we won't. I, I hope you do. Um, <laughs> to the editors, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nonetheless, let's get right into it. What are we talking about today, Wendy? So Bucky Nation, right? Like, um, it's no secret that South Africa has this weird love affair with with Bucky's. I mm -hmm. don't understand it, but I get it. Um, and I think that's more important. So today, hopefully, you can help me in unpacking what, why is the Bucky so popular in South Africa? Like, wh why do South Africans love it so much, and why do they move towards it? Well, I mean, I suppose the first things to to uh, to ask ourselves is, uh, you know, it's only called a Bucky, yeah. Uh, wh yeah. You know, wh where does the term uh, Bucky come from? So, as far to my knowledge, I think the the word Bucky is actually an Afrikaans word, which. Uh, refers to the, the buck in the back. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. um, like, like buck hut. Yeah, yeah. But only in South Africa is it called that. Um, not even like in, I don't know, Amsterdam or something. Um, so that's very interesting. I think that's something that's very unique to us. But... Well, I just Googled it. Yeah. And it's borrowed from Afrikaans, bucky, uh -huh. from informal northern Dutch, spelt exactly the same as a matter of fact, bucky. Do they call it a bucky in, in Netherlands? Looks like it. Huh, interesting. But, uh, you know, it, uh, every single country has their own different word for it, and I think that's the, the weird thing. Sedans oh. are called sedans everywhere, but uh, buckies are buckies. Datsun came up with or coined it. Huh, that's news to me. The nickname for the various LDVs made by Datsun Motor Company. And they called it a bucky. They called it a bucky. They should have trademarked that name because yeah. everyone calls it now. Well, I don't know. Bucky. You know, there's a problem with that in branding terms, though. What's the problem? So um, when you think of toothpaste, what brand comes to com to mind? Colgate. Colgate. Yeah. Right. How far do you go? So if 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 you have a uh, uh, a product, yeah, yeah. Um, that you like using, that's not Colgate. What would uh, it be? It's still Colgate. It's always Colgate. Uh, Even if it's not Colgate. Well, I mean, it has its own name, but it's Colgate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but that's the problem. Is, is the is problem brands yeah. can go too far where uh, yeah. uh, where the actual brand name becomes, becomes synonymous the name. with yeah. the product. Becomes a yeah. like a like a noun or whatever. Yeah. So w maybe that's why they didn't. Uh, Datsun didn't uh, brand. Anyway, we're not here to talk about brands. We're here to talk <laughs> about the Bucky. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's called Bucky in South Africa. Well, what is it called everywhere else? In America, I know it's called the truck. Yeah, but in Japan, I think has the most interesting name for a Bucky. Uh huh. And it's. Uh, uh, the Pika Papu Toraku. And do you know what that translates or why they call it that? Pika Papu Toraku. Yeah. Pika so Papu Toraku. Say that fast. Pika Papu Toraku. Pika Papu Toraku. Yeah, what does it stand for? So essentially it's um, it's it's Sonics, um, or Phonics rather, um, and it's basically 
pickup truck. Um, so uh, it's just the way it sounds. They kind of just gave it a, a word for pickup truck. Is so when you go to Japan, you want uh, you want to buy, you just ask for a piku. Ask for a piku, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. A piku. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, so in South Africa, um, the new and used top selling car for the last recent months has been a Bucky. Yeah. Um, well, Ford Ranger, right? The Ford Ranger and the Toyota Hilux. Yeah. Um, it's far back as I can remember. Those have been essentially the most sold. But what's interesting is that it's not the most popular body type, mm. um, which tells you that specific to those models, they kind of just run the segment in terms of new and used car sales. Yeah. Um, and I think it would be interesting to find out why people love specifically the Ranger and the Hilux so much, um, and why not the other the the other uh, Bucky's on offer. Because well, we what other Bucky's are there? There's the Amarok. There's the Amarok. The VW. Right, Mercedes Benz Bucky, which didn't do too well. I no, don't I think, think they, they discontinued. They discontinued actually, them. Yeah. yeah, and the Isuzu D Max, which you know was a famous KB yes. uh, before the rebrand. Well, yeah, the Isuzu, the Isuzu, Isuzu, Isuzu <laughs> was what's wrong with me? Uh, the Isuzu was uh, 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 very popular and probably might still be very popular with farmers, right? It is, yeah. Mm. So when they originally, well, f- firstly, l- let me just say that the Isuzu as well as the KB still is featured on the top five most popular. Um, it's just that the rebrand has caused a little bit of issues in terms of people identifying it, but ultimately, um, Isuzu has a, a really long history in South Africa. I think they were the first OEM in the country to actually produce um, a Bucky in our shores. Yeah. Um, so they've, you know, they've, they've always been around, and they kind of live by uh, that whole Bucky tradition and heritage of providing. Well, I, I stand yeah. to correction, but isn't uh, isn't Isuzu's uh, claim to uh, fame uh, built strong or built to last? Um, I'm not sure what, you know, the messaging that they, they use, but yeah, uh, Google. they've really um, been at the forefront and ingrained in South African kind of pickup mm. culture. Um, but yeah, d- I don't know if you know this, but do you know why they're so popular in South Africa? Um, I uh, think Isuzu. No, no, no. Specifically, Bucky's. Oh, Bucky's. Mm. Why? So, I think COVID has highlighted a very interesting thing, right? So, when COVID happened, especially when deliveries came in, we saw a massive increase in searches, right? In you vans. That? Yeah. Well, I mean, in not only Bucky's, Bucky's, but uh, but in panel vans. Uh, you know, anything that could load stuff inside. Exactly. Yeah. So, the Bucky. I think people. This is an opinion, by the way. So, I think people really more than anything see Bucky's is not just this vehicle mm. to take your kids to school. It's versatile. It's versatile. Well, yeah, opinions are welcome, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're the listening to this, watching this, uh, streaming this, streaming this uh, you know, give us your opinion. What is your opinion? We, you know, we do it. Uh, Wendy and I uh, have uh, have opinions. We think that uh, that Bucky's are versatile, especially the double cabs. Yeah, mostly the double cabs, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, the single cabs as well, they, they kind of, you know, obviously you don't have, mm. you can't carry the kids, but, you still have. Well, it depends if you want to put them in the back or not. I, I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's just people just love the fact that it can yeah. do everything. Um, if you're with your friends, you're going out adventure driving or trailing or whatever, take your bucky. You can't take your sedan there. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I've seen some sedans in uh, in, in in thick sand. But uh, the early days of automobile manufacturing, uh, vehicles were sold as chassis only and third parties yeah. added bodies on top. That was in 1913. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That uh, uh, vehicles were actually just chassis. And uh, a crowd of the name of Galleon All Steel Body Company, an early developer of the pickup and dump truck. Mm. Oh, so yeah. Bucky's are were actually dump trucks. Built and installed hauling boxes on a slightly modified Ford Model T. So you remember the Ford Model T? Well, yeah. you don't remember. It, the first, uh, <laughs> yeah. But the first, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, first mass produced car. car. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. First mass produced car by Ford. <laughs> and uh, from 1977, 1917, uh, it was called the Ford Model TT, which had a Bucky at the back. Mm-hmm. So basically, from the moment that people could buy these chassis or, I guess, automobiles, mm. people were putting things to In carry things. Yeah. yeah. Um, it makes sense. It's cheap, right? It's if, especially if you're just buying a chassis. Yes. The easiest thing to do is just put in yeah. like a carrier, like a wagon, yeah. essentially. Well, um, I mean, there's a there's a there's also a term for a, a one man entrepreneur that fixes stuff, the Bucky Brigade. 
I have never heard that. This, this is news to me. Yeah, yeah. it's called the they've oh. called the Bucky Brigade. Uh, I mean, hardworking entrepreneurs that uh, that use Buckies for their own personal entrepreneurial businesses. Yeah, probably handymen, plumbers, electricians, those guys. Everyone really now, delivery men, the works. Bucky Brigade. It's Bucky Brigade is growing. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> uh, and then uh, seeking part uh, of this market share, Dodge introduced a three-quarter ton pickup with a cab and body constructed entirely out of wood in 1924. <laughs> Imagine driving in a car made out of wood. Safe. Well, uh, <laughs> well, some of the fancy cars got wood on the dash. <laughs> on the dash, but like not the body. <laughs> 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 um, and in 1925, Ford followed up with a Model T-based steel-bodied half-ton oh. with an adjustable tailgate and heavy-duty rear springs. Now, I suppose they had to go from a you know three-quarter ton to uh, to a half-ton because this thing was made of steel and not wood, and maybe it was made out of wood because uh, it was too heavy. Yeah, it must be. Um, I can imagine how heavy that would be, uh, mm. just trying to pull that. It's crazy. And uh, and build the Ford Model T runabout with the pickup body sold for this two hundred and eighty one US dollars. Oh, what a time to be alive! Yeah, I know. Yeah, In nineteen twenty eight, uh, it was replaced by the Model A, which had a closed cab, uh. safety glass windshield, roll up side windows, and three speed transmission. Now we've got to go a little bit faster. Yeah, no, definitely. You can see that things were just progressing over time as people started seeing problems with having a wooden bucky. Yeah, Solve, uh, yeah solving solving problems. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then 1930, uh, around 1930, uh, buckies were somewhat of a thing. Yeah. And in the 1950s, consumers began purchasing pickups for mm -hmm. lifestyle rather than, and that's what you were talking about, yep. lifestyle use, you yeah. know, rather than uh, uh, being a utility vehicle or something. I mean, they've, they've kind of stayed there, right? That's yeah. where they're kind of positioned now. So, yeah. And then what happens afterwards? So when did it come to South Africa? Oh, in 1978, apparently, uh, the Isuzu produced uh, the first South African bucky in 1978. We were talking about Isuzu just now. Yeah, and we saw a that. massive explosion in popularity, and that hasn't stopped. Yeah. And today, I think they hold about 17% of the market. Um, so, buckies. You know, it's buckies, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not a massive amount. I mean, it's a significant. No, it's amount. big. It's a significant it's amount. Yeah. If you think, I mean, uh, no other, no other uh, body type holds that kind of market share, does it? I would have to go back and, and research yeah. that. But well, let's come back with that answer. Yeah. What uh, does the, does Bucky's as a body type hold the biggest market share at seventeen percent? I would, I would, I would challenge that and say it's the hatchback. You think it's the hatchback? I think it's the hatchback. Uh, what about the SUV? Um, I think it's the most, you know, the fastest growing. Um, but yeah. I think people just can't afford. Um, it's as much as the hatchback. Yeah. yeah. So whether you're hauling sheep in the Karoo, zipping between Gauteng <laughs> sky skyscrapers, <laughs> the Isuzu Bucky has become synonymous with South African way of life for more than 40 years. How do you feel about the Bucky? Like, ha have you ever owned a Bucky? Yes, I had a Colt Rodeo. Remember the Colt yeah, Rodeo? Well, Double cab. Yeah, I remember you, you always tell me about it. Yes. Um, you have a, a, a serious love for that car, so... Yeah. I think you the same as you know the rest mm. of South Africa. Well, I'm not really a bucky person anymore, but yeah. uh, but I used to. I mean, I used to do scuba diving back then. That's why. Mm. So uh, so the the Colt Rodeo double cab was uh, cool to drive onto the beach if you wanted to do a shore entrance. Yeah, uh, yeah. With uh, with the equipment on it. So I've never owned a bucky, but uh, my sister does, mm. and uh, I mean, it's so useful. Like you you know you always look at it like you know no speed or whatever, but it's so. Useful. It goes fast enough. I mean, sure. Yeah, it does what it needs to do. Um, well, uh, you know, to add to the Bucky range that we were talking about, the Isuzu, the Toyota Hilux, uh, Ford Range, the most popular uh, Bucky in South Africa at the moment, and then the VW Amarok and the Nissan Navara. Nissan Navara tried to make a dent. They did. And they and did they a really they good did job. For, yeah, a little while. Um, but, uh, you know, recent years, I think the Amarok has taken a lot of its share. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something to add to why it's popular. So we did recently did that that release where we're speaking about on a used bucky with less than five hundred, with less than five thousand k, specifically the Hilux, uh, the D Max, and uh, the Ranger. Yeah, you can get almost a hundred thousand rand taken off the the new price. Gee whiz! Um, so I think that's another aspect of why people love bucky so much is because I mean you can 
make a massive saving on buying pretty much a nearly new bucky. Yeah. Um, whereas with the sedan or coupe, you'd never see anything like that. Well, I don't know. It depends on how uh, how the uh, the dealers and the car manufacturers see the market that they could potentially grab as a result, right? Yeah, no, it's demand and supply. Well, uh, you know, a recent study using our own data um, uh, to what Wandi is saying unpacked that you get almost 100,000 rand off. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Of uh, a Hilux or Ranger with a 2020 uh, year model uh, with 6,000 kilometers on the clock. And um, like you say, that's massive. What, I mean, what, how, what, what would you do with that extra 100K? There's so much you can do. Um, outside of just buying another vehicle that's, you know, mm. um, it's just a saving. Well, you um, get more You get more bucky for your car. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Don't even know if that makes sense. <laughs> So last week we spoke to the MD and marketing manager of Jaguar Land Rover South Africa and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and uh, unpacked the future of mobility in electric cars. But in South Africa, despite the popularity of buckies, we only have four mass-produced EVs. None of them being a bucky. None buckies. Yeah. So what's happening in the bucky world now in electric so vehicles? I remember, I think it was November last year, uh, Tesla released a Cybertruck. Well, they haven't released a Cybertruck yet. They, they announced, launched, announced, they launched it, yeah. It, yeah. Um, and, I mean, to massive acclaim, um, everyone fell in love with it. And within a few weeks, there was, uh, I think it was over 250,000 pre-orders. At $5,000 a pre-order. Yeah. And on top of that, now they're reporting that they're essentially selling pre-orders of around 5,600 a week. Gee, of the Cybertruck. Of the Cybertruck popular thing um so it's it's incredibly popular in, in terms of an, an ev bucky um but you know there's there's other guys in the in the game who are kind of trying to take a little bit of that share um before it happens but once again for some reason none of them are coming to africa um and it, that doesn't make any sense considering well, i suppose when the ice vehicles uh, see the see the rearview mirror that's when uh, we'll see these things in south africa right yeah i mean uh, we've got the ford f-150 ev that's yeah. been made that's uh in america uh the nicola badger yeah that's that car where you can drink the water that comes out yes. of its exhaust <laughs> the gmc hummer the hummer's gonna make a comeback in ev world what? hopefully that comes to south africa that sounds interesting I think that yeah. could kind of be a competitor to the cyber truck do people want a hummer that's an ev i mm. don't know I don't know. I don't know. I don't we'll know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, well. But anyway. yeah. Anyway. So, talking about buckies, uh, let's get our uh, our uh, motoring journalist and expert, uh, um, Martin Pretorius, on the line. Yeah, and he knows a lot about buckies, so. He does. I think he'll answer some of our questions. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's get some. How's it, Wondy? How's it, George? How you doing? Good and you. Let's get you up on the screen so yeah. everybody can see you. Uh, how's it, Martin? Nice to be back, George. Yeah, nice to be back. <laughs> uh, nice, nice to see you again, Martin. We we're just talking about buckies and um, and uh, uh, and and South Africa's love for buckies. And apparently, you've just done a piece on the 2021 Toyota Hilux. Yeah, indeed, I did. I actually did two pieces. The first one covered the broad overview of this latest round of updates. But mm. then last week, I had opportunity to actually drive the new ones as well. Is it just more of the same? At first glance, it looks like just cosmetic updates. But under the skin, there are actually some pretty significant advances compared to the. But there's nothing wrong with one. being more of the same. I mean, it is the most popular car in South Africa, right? Like it was doing something right. Exactly. I mean, I christened it. Um, I, I gave it the unofficial name of South Africa's national vehicle, and <laughs> for very good reason. I think <laughs> apart from three years, it's been South Africa's best-selling vehicle for the better part of four decades. Mm. So they must be doing something right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's a huge, um, I don't know, trump card for for Toyota to to have that title and to have the love of South Africans so entrenched in just our lifestyle and and who we are. I mean, looking um, at looking yeah. at the 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 just the shape of this bucky, it's it kind of uh, um, wants to be a bit of a wild track. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Funny you should mention that, George, because you picked up on one of the main issues that Toyota addressed with this facelift. Um, they restructured the range, and at the very top of the range is a new derivative that they call the Legend. So it's SSR Raider, 
And then yeah. Legend, instead of Raider being the top spec, the Legend is now the top spec one. And that one comes with all the electronic, uh, with all the cosmetic thingamagodies mm -hmm. you could think of, yeah. um, which were or which used to be exclusive to the Ranger Wild Track or, well, the aftermarket for that matter. Well, I suppose all the customizable bits, right, uh, that, uh, that the Wild Track has options for is yeah. is really where the market seems to be. People want to be able to customize their buckies. Yep. I mean, everyone exactly. has one, right? So, so let's personalize it. Yeah, let's personalize it. Yeah, so now Toyota offers a customized edition basically from the floor with only one option pack, um, and that's the SR trim. Like well, why do you think the Hilux is so popular? Um, you know, we were just talking about it now, but w like, what is your expert opinion on, on this? It's hard one brand equity. Okay, okay. that's the that's the main thing. Toyota has earned their reputation for durability, um, and in a workhorse such as a Hilux or a Bucky, that is the most important thing. Yeah, trust. That, that trust is just it's it's entrenched with us, right? We we, we think exactly. we see a Toyota and we're like reliable. It can do it all exactly. Well, I mean, exactly. if you look at if you look at a but, map of map of Africa, all you see is red. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's it's fascinating. So, what are the well, wh who are the competitors though? Who is it? Um, is anybody who's g giving giving them some trouble? Well, that's the thing. Um, this current generation Hilux arrived in twenty sixteen, and it got treated to a cosmetic update in twenty eighteen, where they got rid of the uh, sad face of the first ones. <laughs> What do you mean sad face? I'm trying to picture this. Uh, yeah, you have to see it. When you see it, you know. Uh, when you, you see can't it, you unsee understand. it. <laughs> it's, it's, it. It had a face that really needed a bull bar to give it some presence. Let's just uh, call okay. it a weak okay. jawline. <laughs> so they remedied that in 2018. But in the meantime, Ford has launched some new um, ranges. And Volkswagen's brought out some Amarok upgrades and the Suzu Bucky's been um, revised. Uh, basically, the competition has turned a lot stronger than it was in 2016 when this Hilux arrived. So Toyota also caught up to yeah. the market leaders with this facelift. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the moment, and I'm assuming you're saying market leader being the uh, uh, Ford Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a while back, uh, uh, Lawrence mentioned that the Ranger is probably South Africa's best bucky at the moment. Yeah, it's well, the most popular. Hilux, yeah. Yeah, Hilux is now they want their title back. All right. So two two questions. Uh, one uh, uh, about the suspension, uh, leaf spring yeah. suspension. I'm assuming still. Still leaf springs at the rear, yes. Um, gold springs at the front, leaf springs at the rear. But what they did do is they changed the spring rates, they changed the dampers, and they changed the stiffness of the suspension bushes, which gave the whole thing a whole lot more compliance. Uh -huh. In other words, you don't go over the same bump twice anymore. You just <laughs> feel it once and then it's it, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, in uh, in pilot terms, if you if you flare too soon uh, when you land, yeah. uh, sometimes you do two landings, and uh, you know you could do two bumps in a in a bucky, <laughs> like two landings in an airplane. What's the interior like, Martin? Interior looks very much like it did before. They didn't tamper too much with it. Um, some versions of the legend, the double cabs of of, of the legend. Um, actually have a new nine-speaker B&O sound system. Oh, wow. Yeah, but nice. it looks kind of tacked on because the speakers are mounted in pods, in pods on top of the dashboard. So <laughs> it doesn't really look OEM, but at least it is something different from the normal ILAX fare. Okay. The big thing inside, though, is the new infotainment system. Martin with uh, with the Hilux Bucky, um, and uh, and what we're looking for is two things. One, what is the price of this thing? Well, the pricing, obviously, being a Toyota, is quite steep. Um, there are various different different versions available for this of well, of this vehicle. The cheapest, well, let's call it the least expensive Legend trim, is six hundred and sixty eight thousand five hundred bucks. But that's not really the best value in the range. 
personal yeah. opinion, I'd say forget about the styling add-ons, save a huge lot of money, and rather just go for a normal Raider 2.8 GV6, mm-hmm. which has the same engine, same gearbox, same suspension, same infotainment system, now with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. Lovely. And, well, that's probably the sweet spot in the range. And your rank out of 10, finally. I'd give it a four. Four? Uh, wow. uh, uh, out of 10, sorry. Yes. Eight. eight out of 10. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Broke my heart. I was like, what? Uh, four out of 10. We've like, <laughs> eight you know, out of 10, we, yeah. we're so happy that uh, the Ford Ranger Wild Track is getting some competition and it gets a, no, it's not a four out of 10, people. It is an eight out of 10 from our expert, <laughs> Martin Pretorius. Well, it was really good to have you on, Martin, and uh, uh, thank you for giving us the lowdown on the uh, Toyota Hilux 2021 model. When does it hit the shores? It actually went on sale the beginning of last week, so it went on sale on the 12th of Lovely. October. Beautiful. So you can go out and get it. Uh, it's probably on Auto Trader already, right? Yeah, uh, probably is, and I'm going to be interested to see how it does in its first month. Um, this is going to be a popular one. I have a feeling. I have a feeling it's going to be popular. You just watch. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna give the the Ford Ranger a little bit of a run for its money. All right. Very finally, one delay. Who do we have questions from today? So we have three questions, very interesting questions. Um, and the first one is actually Bucky related. So I'm looking for Who's a this? good. This is Raymond. Raymond's asking this. Ah, Raymond. So he's asking, or he, or she. Um, I'm looking for a huge good Bucky for everyday use. Um, so specifically, he wants to trade in the Mazda 1.6. And he just wants something that's fuel efficient, something he can use every day, something that can handle rough terrains. Um, what can he get um, under you know price range of around four thousand rand per month? Well, I mean, it's a bit of a tough one, Raymond. Uh, but uh, let's try and answer your question. Uh, you know, it sounds like you want a, a, a one tonner, uh, yeah. maybe even a half tonner. Um, yeah, half tonner would be kind of a smaller bucky. Um, one tonners, um, they. Uh, they, they're a little bit expensive, I think. And for 4,000 Rand a month, you're probably going to have to look for a, a, um, a half tonner. Um, if you want to go on rough terrain, you need a diff lock. Yeah. Um, I don't know too many half tonners that come with diff lock. Especially at 4,000 Rand a month. Especially at 4,000 Rand a month. Yeah. So this is a bit of a tough ask. Um, but maybe an older Mazda BT50, 2.5 diesel. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, notoriously when it came in, it was priced really right. So now it's going to know be priced even mm. better very good bucky though uh mm. is the nissan np300 2.5 diesel yeah that was also another best seller yeah um lots of legacy things there but also legacy comes with issues so just be careful yeah. if you're gonna be doing that i think the problem here is the four thousand rand a month yeah. um if you raymond if you're listening so if you can just bump that up a little bit um you'll get a better car you'll get a much better car more value yeah. um yeah better experience exactly all right, next question, Wendy. So the next question is from Phil Niano, um, who asked, I'm looking for a Bucky that I can v- con- convert to use to carry canine trackers. So uh, this gentleman here, he's in the security business and he just wants something that's going to carry four of his team members, as well as his tracker dogs and the equipment that they use um, when they're on tour. Well, I suppose uh, what you need here is an off-road capable 4x4 double cap. Yeah, so you can have to carry four people, you need a double cab. You can't go with uh, with a single cab. So that's kind of probably criteria number one is a double cab. And uh, we've just been talking about the uh, uh, the Ford Ranger, yeah, popular car, and uh, the Toyota Hilux, um, and then maybe even the Isuzu. But, um, that's kind of your good options there. Yeah. Plus, they, uh, all three options are easy to convert. So whatever your requirements are and however you want to kind of configure mm. um, your buck, um, you can kind of, you know, there's lots of options that you can do. There's lots of like aftermarket people who can assist you with that. So yeah, yeah, definitely that. Not a sedan, not a coupe. Well, I suppose you could <laughs> go for an SUV like a Land Cruiser. Um, yeah, but would you want to? I mean, uh, I'm assuming well, that's going to be like it? rough riding a little bit. Oh, it's good. To get a Land Cruiser is quite capable. Capable, but I mean, it's, it's really expensive. Yeah, it is for this for this application. I yeah. suppose <laughs> it is. You know. Well, uh, anyway, failing that, uh, you know, double cap Bucky. Uh, Always. I'd probably recommend the Isuzu KB250 or a Hilux DC for that purpose. Yeah. And the final question, Wendy. So the last question is a short one. It's um, by Mohomotsi who asks, is it possible to trade one expensive car for two? Um, yes. So, you know, let's take an example, Ferrari, and you want, I don't know, two X5s or something. 
Oh, I don't know if anybody would do that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but is it possible? Is yeah, that I think, I think in the exotic world, you know, where you where you want to uh, trade a Ferrari for two like ge- like regular day cars, yeah. you're going to battle to find a dealer to do that because not every dealer is going to take the Ferrari. Yeah. Okay, but you might find one. But if you kind of say want to trade a you know 1.2 million rand X5 for two, you know, an Polo Audi and yeah. a Polo, for yeah. instance, uh, you're definitely going to get that right. The dealers are going to definitely do it. You can downgrade for two cars. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a good option. That's a good option. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I'm assuming um, just want to. There's no use for the expensive car anymore. Coronavirus. Yeah, it happens. It happens all the time. <laughs> I suppose you know you got one one family car that needs to turn into two, uh, yeah. and and, uh, and that's what we do. Well, uh, we're out of time, Wendy. And uh, yeah. uh, again, to our listeners, thank you for joining. This has been epic. Any final thoughts? Yeah, just stay out of the heat, guys <laughs> and girls. Uh, heat stroke is serious. I'm feeling it here. So. Yeah, just stay chilled. (laughs) Stay chilled. Well, my name is George Mini, and uh, that's been another episode of Auto Central brought to you (laughs) every week by autotrader.co.za. See you next time. Mm.